BH this morning is proud to go in praise of the chicken. After that crisis at the fast food chain KFC, hundreds of branches closed after the restaurant giant ran out of supplies, leading some customers to call the police. That's some customers called the police. These shoppers in Bristol seem staggered. It's a chicken place, so <laughs> they should have enough chicken. Like they should be able to store it. It's a big chain, so it does seem unbelievable, really, that all the chicken, as farmers, surely there's enough chickens. Millions of chickens are killed each day in this country, their life cycle measured in days. The industry employs thousands. Farmers Weekly estimates that the poultry sector contributes £3 billion to the UK economy each year. So just what is our relationship, as humans, to the chicken? Well, in a moment, we'll meet a couple with their own flock who wouldn't eat their own birds and left life was at stake. First, Andrew Lawler is the author of Why Did the Chicken Cross the World? The epic saga of the bird that powers civilization. The KFC chicken crisis likely will be short-lived, but it is the latest sign that the lives of humans and the world's most common bird are deeply entwined. Take Mexico, where people eat more eggs per capita than anywhere else on Earth. When farmers in 2012 called millions of birds due to disease, prices shot up. What is still remembered as the Great Egg Crisis rattled the country's new government when protesters took to the streets of Mexico City. About the same time, rising poultry prices in Egypt were a factor in sparking that country's brief revolution. They are eating pigeon and chicken, but we eat beans every day was a popular rallying cry in Cairo. And in Iran, when chickens became scarce for a time, Television broadcasters were warned not to show images of people eating the bird for fear they might stir unrest. It wasn't always like this. Chicken as an essential food is a very modern idea. In fact, archaeologists and anthropologists say that when the bird's ancestor, the red jungle fowl, was domesticated thousands of years ago in Southeast Asia, it wasn't for its meat and eggs. The rooster's loud crow was a useful wake-up call for farmers, who also admired the bird's bright feathers and fighting spirit. It was in the cockpit rather than the cooking pot that the chicken first became part of our everyday lives. When the exotic bird spread east to Europe, it earned sacred status. It's no accident that Christian churches sport weather vanes with roosters. Pope Gregory I in the 6th century declared the bird the most suitable emblem for Christianity since it calls the spiritually sleepy to wake up. Ancient Romans sought the advice of sacred chickens on important matters of state, such as whether to go to war, while Greeks sacrificed the bird to the god of healing, while also making a nice chicken soup, which recent science shows indeed will lessen the symptoms of the common cold. The chicken's role changed abruptly in 1842, when a British sailor gifted Queen Victoria with five Chinese chickens. Entranced by their size and beauty, she built a special home for them at Windsor Castle and started a craze for the exotic fowl. She had her birds mated with the scrawnier but tougher English varieties, producing the ancestor to what fills today's KFC bucket. But it was only after World War II that the industrial chicken we gobble by the ton first appeared. The Chicken of Tomorrow contest in the United States resulted in a bird with a breast big enough to compete with beefsteaks and pork chops. In most Western countries, chicken now is by far the most popular meat, which in Britain translates to two million birds a day. Other nations, such as China, are quickly catching up. More and more massive factory farms and processing plants, usually tucked well out of public sight, churn out vital protein for the urban billions usually cheaply and efficiently, until a supply chain snafu, such as the one that afflicts KFC, sets off alarms. But there is no free lunch. The work at chicken plants often is dangerous and the pay low. Mountains of chicken waste pose a serious environmental hazard. And then there is the sheer awfulness of the lives of billions of animals farmed for food. Chickens in the United States, for example, are not even considered animals if they are destined for the table there are virtually no national rules regulating their treatment. This may be changing. Producers are responding to consumer concerns about how chickens are raised. A host of companies are churning out vegetable-based fake chicken that increasingly is hard to tell apart from the real thing. 
And the pet chicken movement reminds us that chickens are more than just a cheap meal. They're also fighters and lovers. They're gentle and violent. They aspire to fly, but they are bound to the earth. They are, in other words, a lot like us. Mm. Andrew Lawler. 